Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I want to talk to you guys about a couple of very interesting updates that have been floating around for NVIDIA's RTX 50 series of graphics cards, which of course will be powered by Blackwell. Now, yesterday, NVIDIA did host a full kind of disclosure for conference regarding Blackwell, but it was for the data center slash AI variants. So obviously, we don't still know officially anyway a whole host of details for the gaming architecture. Um, versions of Blackwell but there have been some very interesting leaks that have popped up and I've also been hearing a few things myself so uh, Coppertite 7 Kimmy who is a very well-known leaker on Twitter has stated that the um, L1 cache of 1SM for GB202 so GB202 of course will power the highest end variants of RTX 50 for example the RTX 5090 definitely has significant improvements compared to AD102 and GA102 which is 128 kilobytes it means the I'm assuming that means throughput and it was a typo of a single SM will increase now this is something that I've personally been hearing quite a lot that in terms of the actual cache structure of the uh, Blackwell versions of the cards there have been significant overhauls but overall the real take-home message here is that the actual single SM performance will actually go up significantly and of course you can't directly compare one architecture against another for example you can't compare like RDNA um, 2 versus RDNA 1 or RDNA 3's number of compute units so you can't say that you know this has X number of CU versus this number of CU, but AD102, for example, has um, 144 SM. That would be, of course, the fully enabled variant. And of course, if you were to go to the 4090 or what have you, then obviously you have a set number of SM disabled. Coppertite also adds that GB202 will use the same process node as GB100. I must clarify once again that TSMC 4N, which is basically NVIDIA, is based on TSMC. Five, not four. I'm sorry, I cannot mention uh, match Jensen's naming with TSMC naming. We need professional chip analysis. At least there is a 30% increase in density. Now, earlier I had actually been hearing it was 3NM, so I don't know if information has changed or whether my information was simply wrong at the time. The thing is, though, because Infinity uses a lot of custom libraries when it comes to chip design, well, it becomes a little bit trickier anyway. Um, you can kind of see that with Coppertite's tweet. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see actually how uh, performant this actual card is. The full, um, fully enabled die is allegedly 192 SM. Now, the specifications have certainly gone under some changes because 192 SM was the number that Coppertite 7, as well as myself, have been mentioning a few times. And it seemed that the uh, bus width was 384 bit. Um, but then Coppertite had actually said in the past it was 512 and then it went to 384. Now it's back to 512. I'd always, to be honest with you guys, been hearing 384, but now I'm actually hearing that that has almost certainly changed. I'm hearing that yes, it is 512 bit for GB202. And this is obviously a really big deal. So I've now had a couple of very good sources basically tell me that the clock frequency is also going to be low 3000 megahertz. Now, obviously it is very early at this point, so we can't exactly be 100% certain, but I'm hearing, you know, let's say something like 3200 megahertz wouldn't be unsurprising. Unfortunately, one of the problems when we're dealing with clock frequency is you do not know whether that is the base frequency or whether that is the boost frequency. And obviously when it comes to GPU boost, there are so many different factors which can affect, yeah, uh, sorry, um, which can affect the clock frequency. If I can get my words out, that'd be pretty nice. Um, it's very difficult to know exactly how it will end up, but so far, I think you know, 3200 megahertz when boosting does make sense. If you have, you know, any modern NVIDIA card, especially like a 4090 or something like that, and you use any monitoring software, you can see that, especially under lighter workloads when there's not ray tracing and that type of stuff enabled things get very performant. Now, AGF on Twitter had mentioned, um, and this is just quite a recent tweet, that we're going to see Blackwell as one of the largest performance leaps ever 
In terms of gaming, I know I've had a couple of other people tell me that they believe that this is very much true. I'm hearing some very good things. Obviously, again, we are not dealing with final chips here, and we are also not dealing with final drivers and software. So things are very difficult to 100% nail down. So with any performance estimates this early, you have to take them with some measure of salt, but I'm hearing between 50 and 70% increase in rasterization performance. That would be basically GB202 versus its predecessor. So that is very impressive, honestly. I mean, I, I think there are a lot of folks who wouldn't necessarily have agreed that upgrading from like a 3080 to like a, a 4080 is necessarily worth it. I mean, yeah. Obviously, if you've got the money, fine, great, but, uh, you know, the 3080 is still a really good card, but it's going to be very interesting to see what NVIDIA price these at, because, quite frankly, I am not expecting these things to be cheap, and that is putting it mildly. So, yeah, I'm hearing now that we're looking at 512-bit for the memory. Um, the power consumption figures, though, they're still a little bit up in the air. Around 500 watts, though, is what one source is telling me. This may change. I'm trying to verify it with a couple of other people, but unfortunately, time zones are a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, 500 watts. And I'm also told that the 96 megabytes of L2 cache that I'd previously put out doesn't seem to be correct. Instead, it is 128 megabytes. So I think that these chimps are going to be very impressive indeed. Uh, one of the big real pushes of course for nvidia going forward is always going to be ray tracing and path tracing multiple sources have now told me that really that is where the money is and by the money i mean not just figuratively but also you know in a literal sense as well basically a lot of nvidia's r and d is now going into ray tracing and path tracing whether or not you agree with that that's down to you know you and you know your opinion but NVIDIA certainly are going to be pushing this, and I think path tracing is kind of their vision going forward. I've heard a well over two times increase with uh, path tracing slash ray tracing, but that's probably using something like DLSS. DLSS, I have heard that there are some significant improvements, but I can't get n them nailed down. One person has told me um, that it could be something like frame generation has considerably less latency, which is obviously, you know, frame generation good, latency bad. Um, I personally will believe that when I see it, honestly. But either way, I think NVIDIA will be really pushing this um, architecture. I, I suspect it's going to be very, very good. And honestly, um, they will probably need it because I think RDNA 5 is also going to be really performant. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what the marketing and uh, performance strategies are for both companies. I will be also extremely curious to see how RDNA 5 actually ends up in terms of ray tracing. Now, if you've been watching the PlayStation 5 Pro leaks, you'll see that um, roughly a two to four times increase in ray tracing performance, with four times being an outlier um, for the RDNA 4 implementation, which is inside the PS5 Pro. Now, whether there are some changes, whether there's some tweaks, whether Sony have done something specific, I don't know. Now, if that's indicative of what we'll see for RDNA 4, assuming that AMD can improve upon that at all for RDNA 5, it will be quite interesting. Roughly speaking, it will mean that it's maybe around Lovelace levels, that is RDNA 4, but obviously they do not have flagship variants of the cards, so it's not going to compete in terms of raster performance with like a 4090 or something like that so it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what the pricing strategies are going forward i will be very excited with that said guys i think that's just about it for this particular video i'm going to try to get more solid information and try to make um a more comprehensive list of specifications because honestly I've heard some really mixed numbers, so I don't know if it's simply, you know, NVIDIA giving some disinformation, which is actually kind of a thing. In fact, there are some... Uh, Tom Henderson was uh, tweeting, actually, that Sony are now, like, really mad on the whole PS5 Pro uh, leaks, and they are now quite literally starting to do internal investigations, and they're probably going to start to reduce the number of studios going forward, which are going to be receiving, like, development kits in the early stages which kind of sucks actually um so yeah like there is a lot of there's a lot of fighting back for leaks right now so that is going to be well it's going to be very let's just say i'm going to be interested to see how this shapes up with that said guys um take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now